Hey guys, how you doing? It's John from Coding with John. Do you need to learn how to get keyboard input from the user in Java? If that's you, you're in the right place. So to get you started quickly, we're going to go over getting strings, integers, and floats from the user. And after we get those basics out of the way, I'm going to show you some of the strange intricacies of how some of these commands work so you don't get yourselves into trouble. So to start, all I've got here is an empty example class called scanner example. Scanner is what we're going to use to get the user input. Um, and all I've got is a public static void main method that you've probably seen many times before. So just what I plan to do here is show an example of how you can get somebody's name, their age, and their shoe size. And so to do that, we're going to need to get a string for their name, an integer, an int for their age, and a float for their shoe size. So to do that, we are going to use Java's built in scanner class and to use the scanner class, uh, we first need to import it. So import java.util.scanner. And that's great. Uh, right now it's complaining that we aren't using it yet. So let's get to using it. So to declare a scanner, you want to declare a variable to put it in. So we're going to declare a new variable scanner. We'll call it scanner equals new scanner. And it takes in the type of scanner we want. There's many different kinds of things you can use uh, and different kinds of inputs. What you want for the keyboard input is system.in. That's standard input, user keyboard input in the console. So this is what we're going to use every time we want to retrieve input from the user. Now, first, I'm just going to go ahead and declare the three variables I'm going to put the information in, which are the name, age, and shoe size. So let's say we got, we're having a string name. We're going to have an int age, and we're going to have a float, not a flat, a float shoe size. You could have a flat shoe size too, I guess. Now, first we want to print a prompt to the user, please enter your name. So we're going to do that with just a basic system.out.println. Please enter your name. And now, of course, we want to allow the user to enter their name. To do that, you're going to use that scanner class. So the command to get a string using scanner is just next line, scanner dot next line. And that retrieves the next line of input that the user enters. So great, but we don't just want to retrieve it. We want to actually put it in our name variable. And to do that, we just say name equals scanner dot next line. What that's going to do is take the next line input from the user and put it into that name variable. So now our name variable will have whatever the user enters. Perfect. Now we need to get the age. We're going to do a similar thing. We're going to prompt. We're just going to copy this. And then we're going to prompt the user, please enter your age. And then to get an int from the scanner, the command is scanner dot next int. Pretty simple, right? See a pattern. So we're just going to take what's returned from next int and assign it and assign our age variable to it. Now our age variable holds what the user entered for their age. And then last, but of course not least, we'll do the shoe size thing for floats. We'll just copy this again. Please enter your shoe size. All right. And let me allow you to take a wild guess what the command to get a float is. You are right. Scanner dot next float. And then we just need to assign our shoe size variable to what is returned by the user there. So shoe size equals scanner dot next float. Great. Now we've got all the input from the user. Let's just print it out to make sure that we retrieved it properly. So to do that, we're just going to do system.out.println again, and we're just going to print out everything that they entered. Your name is name, using the name variable there. And we'll copy that. Your age is age. Copy paste. Your shoe size is shoe size. So let's get this a run, see what happens. Please enter your name. That's right. John, enter your age. This is my real age, 32. Enter your shoe size. And uh, to make it a float, my real shoe size is 14, but to make it floatier, we'll do uh, 13.5. And there it prints out everything that we input. Your name is John, your age is 32, your shoe size is 13.5. So you can see all the information we retrieved from the user is stored in these variables and we can do whatever we want with them. We can we can take the, the name, append it to something else. We could take the age 
add it to some other number. We could take the shoe size, multiple. we can do whatever we want with these, but this is how you get the input from the user. It's really just that easy. There's not a lot to it. So if you just want the basics, that's it, you're done. There's not much more you need to know. But for some of the more advanced usage and to keep you from running into some strangeness, we're gonna go over a little bit more stuff. Uh, first of all, if you're working in IDE like I am, I'm working in Eclipse, you may have noticed that when we declare this scanner, it's upset about something. It's got this yellow squiggly line. It says, hey, your scanner is never closed. Um, and if you're working in a small little program like this, you're probably not gonna run into any problems with that. But in the real world, if you're running this in a large application, you want to be a good steward of stuff. So if you want to be a good Boy Scout and get rid of this yellow wavy line, just at the bottom when you're done using your scanner, just call scanner.close. And that closes it and makes it happy. Now we'll go over some of the more specifics about what these commands are actually doing. So, for example, in the next line command, which I said gets a string, what it actually does is gets all of the user input until it gets a new line, basically until the user press enter. It'll have taken all of that in that whole string. So if I run this again and I uh, enter my name as John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, and I know that's your name too, um, and then I enter my age, 32 or 23, because I mistyped shoe size, 13, it takes in that whole line, right? Great, and that's what we want. So that's how the next line works, but all these other commands, next int, next float, and everything else, um, they work kind of in a different way. So let's go clean this up um, just so we can work with just an int for right now. So we'll get rid of all these other variables and all these other commands. So now we just have the scanner, an age, please enter your age, and that's what we're reporting back. So if we just run this and I enter my name as 12, of course it says your age is 12. But if I run it again and I say my age is 12 space blah, 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 garbage, it says your age is 12. Well, because what it actually does is this next int command takes the input that you put in and stops when it hits the first white space, this space here. And then it doesn't scan anymore. But again, what is interesting is the scanner, the scanner object still waits right here for you to run your next scan command. So what that means is I can say name equals scanner, scanner dot next line. And it will finish retrieving this line. So let's call this a, so, so string name equals scanner dot next line. And your name is name. Now watch what happens when I put in the age. I'm gonna run this, please enter your age. My name is 12, space, blah, 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 hello, hi, how are you? Enter. And notice it says your age is 12, your name is everything after that. And that's because what happened is this next int just grabbed this 12 and stopped. And then the next line retrieved this entire string ending when I pressed enter. And so that's just something to keep an eye out for when you're coding this stuff. Just if you find your scanners are acting weird, just know that that's how it's working. Now, if you wanna make it a little bit more user friendly and take in the entire thing that the user enters before they hit the enter key, what I would recommend you do is just always use next line and get a string and just convert that string to whatever data type you actually need. So for example, let's say if we wanted to get the age as a string, we're gonna get rid of this int age and get a string age. And we'll just get that with the next line, right? So let's just test that real fast. Should be simple. Please enter your age, uh, 763. It prints out your age is 763. But what if I need this as an int? I don't want it as a, as a string. Well, I'll create a new int variable, int, uh, int age, we'll call it that. Um, and we'll set it to integer, dot parse int that string that the user entered, age. So what this will do is take the string that the user entered and parse it into an int. And we can just print that, test it out. Please enter your age, 763. Your age is 763. It works exactly how we expect. And then similarly, if we wanted to store what's passed in as a string as a float, uh, we could take, for example, a float age and to parse a float from a string, we would use, guess what? Float dot parse float and pass in 
the age, and we've got a float age. And we can test that out too. Please enter your age. Da, 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 whatever. Great. Your age is 43.34. It's exactly what we put in, but it's parsed as a float, so I can use it like that. You may be thinking, what if you pass in absolute garbage? So it says, what is your age? And you say, cheese sandwich. What do you, how do you deal with that? So let's, let's watch what happens. First of all, let's run it, enter your age, and we say, cheese sandwich. And it explodes with a number format exception on line 12 here, and that's because it's trying to parse a float from cheese sandwich. Try as you might, you can't make cheese sandwich into a float. So what you can do here is have a try catch around this parsing. So let's say, so let's say we've got, we declare our float, float age. And then we just uh, have this assignment here, float age equals float.parse float age. Great. So what we can do is a try catch around that so we can catch the exception without blowing up the program and then have a loop for the user to enter a valid float. So to do that, let's just first get our try catch. We'll try to do this parse float and we will catch, if it happens, a number format exception, NFE. And what we can do right now is just complain to the user, if this exception happens, hey, you didn't enter a real float. Sad page. Let's just see if that works. Oh, it's complaining because this float age might not have been initialized. So we'll just set it to default to 0.0, .0 for now. That's fine. 0, 0.0 F for float. Run it, enter your age. Now if I put in garbage, like cheese sandwich, hey, you didn't enter a real float. And so that probably caught the exception, finished the program, but it didn't do what we want. What we want it to do is keep looping and trying to retrieve that value from the user until they enter a valid float. So what we can do is gather this user input in a loop. What we're going to want to do is take all of this, this prompting for your age, gathering the age string that they enter. We're going to want to do that inside of a loop. So we can do it a couple ways, but probably a good way is a do while loop. And the reason a do while loop is good here, not just a while loop, a do while loop, as you probably know, always executes at least once. And we do absolutely want to execute this at least once. And think of what our exit condition is. Our exit condition is if this age is successfully parsed as a float. So what we can do is have a Boolean that we're going to use uh, that just stores whether the user entered a valid float. So we'll call it Boolean valid float age. And we're going to start it as false. We're going to assume that they put in garbage. And if they didn't put in garbage, we're going to set it to true and be happy, right? Cool. So now, we write our do while loop. We're going to do all of this, getting printing out, please uh, enter your age, getting the age from the user, trying to parse it into a float and catch the exception if they entered garbage. So we're going to do all of that while that valid float age is false. So basically, we're going to keep looping through this until the user enters a valid float. But right now, there's nothing that'll change this valid float age to true to actually kick it out of this loop. So we want to, when the user enters a valid float, is set this valid float age boolean to true. And we want to do that right after we parse the float. Um, and, the re and the reason for that is that if there is a problem, this is the line it will explode in and go to this catch. So if it gets past that line, we know we have a valid float. So at that point, we can say valid float age equals true. Cool. So now to review, what this is going to do is say we're going to assume we have a bad valid float age and make the user prove that they can put in a good one. We're going to start our loop, print out, please enter your age. The user will enter that age. We will try to parse it into a float. If we do it successfully, we're going to say, great, you did it successfully. And if there's an exception, we're going to say, hey, you didn't enter a real float. And if we reach the end of the loop and we don't have a valid float age, we're going to do it all over again. So let's give it a try. Please enter your age. Let's put in garbage. Cheese sandwiches are not garbage. They're delicious. But it is a garbage float. 
hey, you didn't enter a real float. And you can, and it prompts me again. And I can keep putting in junk. I can put in things that include numbers, but it's still bad. And then I can put in a real number. Your age is 34. And that works. So that's a great way to do user input validation using the scanner class. My recommendation would be to take it in as a string using scanner.nextline and then just parse it into whatever data type you need and just catch exceptions that may come from trying to parse those into those data types and just keep looping until the user enters something that's valid, that's what you want. And you can have all kinds of different validations about that. So say you have an age and they enter 6,000 or negative 10 or something weird like that. You could have your own custom validations for that. So for example, if somebody puts in negative 10.0, that's a valid float, but it's not a valid age. So you might have a check here for, so maybe if you made float ages less than 0.0, .0 and it would keep looping through there until the user enters uh, something valid. So you can do whatever you like there. So I think that's it for today, guys. That should be everything you need to know to get started using the scanner class to get user input in Java from the keyboard. If you got some value out of this video, shoot me a like. If not, go ahead and give me a dislike and tell me what you'd like to see in an upcoming video. So thanks a lot for watching. See you guys next time.